Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be getting glammed with a whole bunch of new products. Majority of the products in this video I am trying for the very first time. We have some new products from Charlotte Tilbury, Dennis Myrex, OIS Beauty, Laneige, and then the rest of the products I've mentioned maybe once before. I'm still testing them out and getting ready for my makeup updates video and so I'm super excited to get into it. I also have a brand new eyeshadow palette to share with you which launches on the 20th. This is from one of my favorite indie brands, Fantasy Cosmetica. It is called the Fighter Palette and they've never done a palette this natural slash neutral before. They've always gone the colorful route and so I'm very, very excited for this one. All of these products are listed and linked down below in the description box. So if you're interested in testing out any of the products I'll be talking about in today's video, please use the links I'm leaving you down there to shop. Whenever you shop for my links, you are helping out my channel and you will also find the discount codes down there. For example, I have a discount code with Fantasy Cosmetica where you save 10% off of your palette if you're interested and that code is PATTY10. If there's any discount codes on anything else I'll be talking about today, all of it will be down below in the description box. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I started today and not even my eyebrows are done because I want to talk about this product for a second time. Now this is not my second time using the new Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel. This is probably like the seventh or eighth because ever since I tried it uh, like a week ago, I have been using it daily. I have not switched back to <laughs> my brow freeze, which is what usually happens when I try a new eyebrow product. I tell you whether or not I like it, whether or not it works for my eyebrows, and then I immediately go back to using brow freeze because that one has been my favorite one for a very long time. Well, that did not happen with this one, and I'll tell you why, because I am obsessed with it. I love it. It works so, so well for my eyebrows. This Rare Beauty Eyebrow Gel has not come out yet. I don't know what the deal is, but they sent it over along with a bunch of products that did already launch, like their cream eyeshadows and their new brow pencils, which we'll also talk about today. And everything else launched except for the brow gel. So definitely keep an eye out. I was just double checking to see if by any miracle it would be in stock, but no, it says coming soon still. This one is going to retail for $17. As you can see, it is very, very easy to work with. And so definitely keep an eye out on my community page and my Instagram account because I will be letting you know as soon as this launches because you guys all need it. It's the best eyebrow gel I have ever tried. I cannot believe how good this is. As you can see, I prefer to use it before I do the pencil. Some people use it after they do the pencil. I don't think it matters with this one. I think it's going to work well either way. And so anyways, I absolutely love it. It keeps my brow hairs in place until I wash it off. Cannot shut up about it. <laughs> and so next we are going to try the Rare Beauty Eyebrow Pencil. I love the packaging of this one. It is very luxe feeling for sure. And this is my second time trying this one. I have not used it since I first tried it. Not that I disliked it. I'm a creature of habit and I went back to using my Benefit Precisely My Brow. But this one I did actually really like when I first tried it and I'm liking it today <laughs> as well. Um, as you can see, it is pigmented. It fills in the brow right away and it looks pretty natural. I think the reason I'm not more in love with this one is because usually my eyebrow pencils are a bit more cool toned than this one is. Like I get the soft black colors in my brow pencils and this is like the very dark brown shade instead. So I feel like I can still see a little bit of difference between the color of the pencil and the color of my brows because my brows are truly black. Um, but I think that's it. That's the only con I have against it because it works very nicely. And that's not a con because they do have a soft black shade. I just don't have it because I got this NPR and they sent me the dark brown color instead of the soft black. Uh, but whenever I restock on this one, I'll definitely get 
the color that I prefer and I think I'm going to get much more use out of it. Plus, I believe this one retails for $19, which is much more affordable than a lot of the high-end eyebrow pencils I usually go for, so it's definitely a better option price-wise. Except the Charlotte Tilbury one, because the Charlotte Tilbury one, you do pay $25 the first time, but then the refills are $15, which is then a better deal for you and the environment. <laughs> All right, the brows are on. And something else that I've noticed since I switched to this brow gel is that I can do my eyebrows a bit thinner than usual because this one kind of has a better grip to it, if that makes sense. So I don't need to leave the hairs as long as I would leave them before so that they would stick better because this one just sticks better anyways. So I've been doing my eyebrows just a little tiny bit thinner since I've had it. For my skin prep, I'm going to be using Magic Cream as per usual. For foundation, I'm going to be using the new Reformulated Dior Backstage Foundation in shade 2N. And this one, I gotta say, I have been absolutely loving ever since I tried it. This is my favorite foundation out of all of the foundations that I've tried very recently. I love it. I have mine in the shade 2N, which I think is a perfect match. And I'm going to be applying it with this sponge. By the way, this is the color of this sponge. This is not a pink sponge that is filthy. <laughs> I feel like I have to throw out that disclaimer because somebody said that my sponge was disgusting once and it's because I was using this one here which i know has a weird color <laughs> anyways i'm blending my foundation on i was listening to a johnny ross podcast the other day and he and his co-hosts were talking about this foundation here and they were saying that they did not like the reformulation both of them i believe have oily skin and so they lost a foundation that had a semi-matte finish to get a foundation that has a more dewy finish to it. So do keep that in mind. I do have very, very dry skin. So I absolutely love the reformulation because it is a more hydrating foundation now. So it goes better with my skin type. But if you have combination or oily skin, you might have preferred the original Dior Backstage Foundation to the new formula because this formula, like I said, is much more hydrating. It has a nice glowy finish to it. Obviously no complaints on my part because this is exactly the type of foundation that I like to go for and by the way It looks beautiful throughout the day. I have worn this one a handful of times now This is my second time I think using it on camera But I have worn it off camera a handful of times and it wears beautifully throughout the day It never gets dry on me. It never gets patchy crumbly It doesn't get oilier than it is either so it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I gotta say, I really, really love the reformulated Dior foundation. With the tip of my sponge, I'm going to grab my color corrector from Charlotte and I'm going to apply it right in the purpley area of my under eye and inner corner. I think I grabbed a bit too much, so instead of putting it under one eye, I just distributed it. For concealer, I'm going to be using this one here from MAC Cosmetics. This is the Studio Fix Everywhere. I have mine in the shade NC25 and I want to get another shade of this one because this is a perfect concealer type shade for me, but I want a shade that matches like my foundation and i think i have to go with an nw because in mac numbers nw means more neutral slash cool toned for some reason they name their shades kind of like the opposite way to everyone else <laughs> which really throws me for a loop by the way anyways this shade nc25 and the mac everywhere Pen has the greatest formula. If you're someone who's like a one and done person, if you're someone who's been like wearing your concealer as foundation and like you love applying your makeup that way, or like just spot applying your concealer on your face for coverage, I feel like the MAC Everywhere pen was made for you. I have a friend that was asking me for advice when it came to buying makeup like a few months ago and she was telling me that she usually just applies her concealer onto her eyes and then she also applies it on her face in specific areas and that she likes a light layer kind of everywhere with a matte finish and she was asking me for a foundation recommendation but I really didn't know what to tell her because if she likes the concealer on the face type of application and spot concealer and all of that I didn't really feel like 
a foundation was necessary if she was happy with the way she was doing it. So the moment I tried this MAC Everywhere pen right here, I texted her because I'm like, I have the product you need. <laughs> um, this is great if you just want to have a one and done product for your entire face. It has amazing coverage, it has the thinnest texture, it has a matte finish, it wears beautifully throughout the day. If you have dry or aging skin, it'll work for you because it does not get dry throughout the day. It is such a fantastic product. I don't feel like I've been this impressed with a MAC Cosmetics product for a very long time. This thing is fantastic. It's genius. Anyways, you can see how good it looks. I lowered the light so you can see how good these complexion products look on my face. I am in love, obsessed. Now that my complexion products are applied, I'm going to try this right here for the second time. This is the Tarte Man Eater Bronzer. I did a try on Ulta haul the other day where I tried this one for the very first time and I really liked it, but not everything in that video was like the right color, AKA the foundation was too light. So I wanna see what it looks like on a foundation that is the right shade for me. I'm going to go ahead and just blend it all in with my sponge. Man Eater Bronzer is blended. I love this bronzer because it is super creamy and it looks very, very natural. It reminds me a lot of my Rare Beauty bronzer in the shade Happy Soul. Like, they are identical to me. In fact, I think we should test the shade side by side because, honestly, off the top of my head, I can't tell a difference. <laughs> Here is my Happy Soul. The packaging, obviously, very similar. Oh my god, they are like the same color. The exact same color. The first one is the Man Eater one from Tarte and Happy Soul from Rare Beauty is the second one right here, which might just be like a teeny tiny bit darker, but like barely. They look so similar to one another. No wonder I couldn't tell the difference, right? For blush, I'm trying something that is new to me and not only is it new to me, but I have been wanting to get my hands on this since it first came out. And I am talking about the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand in the shade Pillow Talk specifically. You can see back here kind of sort of that I have two other ones. I have the shades Pink Pop and Peach Pop, which I absolutely love the formulas of and the colors. Peach Pop out of these two is my favorite. And ever since these came out and for some reason I skipped on getting this one, I have been wanting to try it because it is the Pillow Talk shade and I honestly cannot believe I skipped it to begin with. Here's what the packaging of this one looks like. I cannot wait to put it on my face. Let's open her up. Ooh, satisfying. <laughs> so I'm going to do a couple of dots on each side and I'm going to blend it in with my Rare Beauty stippling brush, which I have been loving. This is something else that I tried recently. If you have any of the Rare Beauty blushes, it works amazingly with those, but I figured any cream or liquid blushes, you could definitely use it for and it blends it out immediately. So here is what the blush looks like blended. I am not mad, it looks so, so pretty. A little bit more cool toned than I expected, to be honest with you. So I'm just tapping the stippling brush on and it is just blending everything for me. Let's go over the nose a bit. And just as I suspected, I freaking love the way this one looks. I knew that I loved the formula already because I loved the formula of the other shades. So obviously that was kind of a given. But this color is really, really pretty as well. And it was a bit more cool tone than I expected it to be, but it's still very flattering on my complexion. I love it. I almost forgot to put this on. This was sent to me from Laneige. It is their sleeping mask, which I absolutely love. Oh, it's a new shade. It smells delicious and it's got these amazing swirls in there. This one is in the shade Pink Lemonade and it smells delicious. I think I grabbed too much. <laughs> so anyways, I just want to put this on to kind of prep my lips for the lipsticks. So good. This is going straight to my nightstand. I love it. Anyways, it's finally time for powder and I have a brand new pink powder that I am dying to try. And it is the new pink powder from Miss Danessa Myrex. This is called the Evolution Powder. It is a priming and smoothing setting powder. 
hopefully it's back at Sephora by now I ordered this one probably like two weeks ago and I had to order it off of the Danessa Myricks website because it was sold out at Sephora so hopefully by the time I upload this video it's back at Sephora but I'll leave you the link down below you guys I did not order this when it first first came out which was probably around a month ago because it is called the evolution powder and I saw a picture on it on trend mood and I thought it was a revolution powder like from makeup revolution which is a brand that I don't tend to love <laughs> so I thought that makeup revolution had made a pink powder and I was like skip and then I realized it was Vanessa Myricks and my interest peaked. <laughs> Here is what the packaging of the powder looks like. It has a sifter right there in the middle, which is one of these soft fabric ones, which I actually quite like. And to apply it, I'm going to be using my Vanessa Myricks Yummy Skin Puff. I bought a set of two from the Vanessa Myricks website along with the powder. This is the biggest one of the two and you have seen me use the smaller one of the two in other videos because I couldn't help myself. But I'm going to use this one today which is the larger one. It's been a while since I applied my concealer so I'm just going to tap over the under eye area with the sponge. I grabbed some powder, I am puffing off the excess right here and I am pressing it right underneath my eyes. I gotta say, it looks beautiful. It's making all of the spaces where I'm applying it super smooth looking, which is definitely the goal. And I love that it's not too mattifying. It leaves things with a really nice natural finish rather than matte. I'm into it. I really like it, first impressions. I'm going to use my natural finish skin loyalty setting spray from LYS Beauty. A lot of it apparently. I use quite a bit of it but the mister is so fine that it doesn't drench your face you know. I love that that setting spray from LYS Beauty which hopefully it's out by now if not it is coming very very soon doesn't change what you did with your skin. If you have something glowy it leaves it glowy. If something is more matte it leaves it matte. Like it doesn't change the finish of your makeup is what I've noticed which I can certainly appreciate. <laughs> I'm also going to use this LYS Genuine Highlighter, which I tried in my LYS Best and Worst video, and I really liked. And with a clean side of my sponge, I'm just going to be applying this one on the highest points of my cheekbone here, a little bit on the temple, just patting it in place. For a very light and natural sheen to the high points of my cheekbone. They have a lighter color of this highlighter, which at first I thought would probably be best for me because my skin is lighter, but I actually like the color genuine. It doesn't make my skin look darker than it is, and it gives me a very nice natural glow to the face. Next, we have a new eyeshadow palette to try, which I am very excited about. This is the Fighter Palette from Fantasy Cosmetica, and it looks incredible, as you can see right here. I love the names of the shades because they are very fighter palette related, like Blade and um, Fervor and Valor, Cavalier. I'm going to go ahead and swatch all of these shades for you, and then we'll put them on the eyes. I feel like Fantasy Cosmetica's formulas get better with each palette. Are you looking at that? Come on. They are a very, very small indie brand, so their palettes very often sell out. So if you want to get your hands on this one, definitely be on their website on the 20th at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because this one being their first more natural looking palette, I have a feeling it's going to sell out. Since the first palette, they have had really nice shimmer shades, but what impressed me the most about this fighter palette is that even the mattes in this one are super, super creamy. They've always been pigmented, but this time they're not just pigmented, they're also very, very creamy and easy to blend. So take a look right here at how incredible this palette swatches and the beautiful color story of this one. I love the shimmer shades, I love that the mattes are nice and soft and pigmented, and I cannot wait to create a second look with this palette. I did already try it once, I created a look with it for my Instagram account slash YouTube shorts, 
So there is a video out there with a different look with this palette if you're interested it's just a little short video but still and then in today's video i'll do another look and i'll show you the step by step in my other look i started with the shade valor which i loved so today i'm going to do cavalier instead and all of my eyeshadow brushes are clean which has me so excited <laughs> so cavalier on the crease and i am just back and forth lightly going to blend it with my brush by the way i gotta say i really like this shade of matte gray i've tried other matte grays before that i have not been as impressed with as this one i don't know how to say that a matte gray is not as gray as some other ones but that's how i feel about this one like it's got maybe a mixture of other colors in there that is making it look a bit more alive <laughs> All right, here's Cavalier Blended. That is just that one color and you can see how good it blends and like how much dimension it can bring to the eye when you build it up. I'm going to use Marshall next to make it a bit darker. And this is a rougher number one brush. So I'm just stamping it on the outer corner and then I'm going to start blending it into the gray shade with the tip of my brush. And I'm just doing little circles on the edge of the brown shade building and blending back here i think it might be a bit weird to blend a brown that has a bit of warmth in it into a very gray shade but somehow it's working but i think i want to add a bit more warmth to this eye look so i'm going to use the shade victory right here in the center of my eyelid i'm just tapping it in place right in the center of my eyelid with my rougher number one brush i'm going to make sure it blends into my outer corner brown shade and for the inner corner i'm going to use the shade glory this is a rougher number 28 brush i'm applying it with right on the inner corner and inwards and i'm going to mix the two shimmers right here where they meet and the same thing over on this side of course Laura Mercier launched new eyeliner pencils and they are super creamy, super pigmented. And I'm going to use the shade Coco, which is the brown shade right here in the waterline of my eye. And also in between my lower lash line a bit. I'm going to smudge that out with a rougher number 26 right down here. Then with a rougher number 13 and a bit of the shade Cavalier, I am going to further smoke that out so that it kind of matches the top of the eyeshadow. That looks so pretty, actually. I wasn't confident in what I was doing, but now that the eyeliner is on and blended and that the under eye smokiness is happening, I really, really like the way that looks. I actually quite like the warmth that the brown eyeliner added because it matches the center of the top of the eye better, I think. I'm going to try a new mascara that was sent to me. It is called the Watch Me Mascara from a brand called What's Up. I'll let you know whether or not I like it and I'll leave you the link to it down below in the description box. Here's what the bottle looks like and what the wand looks like it's half one type of bristle half a different type of bristle it actually looks promising we'll see here's what it looks like it gives a lot of definition to the lashes i gotta give it that and quite a bit of length but not as much volume as i had hoped here's what the mascara looks like fully applied that's two coats of it i guess i could have kept going but i'm not super impressed with how it's building so I think I'm just going to do some falsies. I'm taking off the lip balm now. I have two shades right here of the new Charlotte Tilbury liquid lipsticks, the Airbrush Flawless Lip Blurs. I have the shade Rose Blur and Pillow Talk Blur. Here's what these colors look like. These were actually sent to me from Charlotte Tilbury. I told you guys in a Will I Buy It video, I was not super interested in trying these, but they made their way to me anyway. So of course I'll try them and let you know how it goes. I just didn't want to spend my money on a liquid lipstick because I just didn't think I would like it, but we'll see. Um, so I'm going to use the Pillow Talk one because I feel like it'll match better with like the vibes today. Mm, very creamy actually. I'm going to apply it regularly. I'm not going to do the blurring thing because I don't really like the way that looks. I do like a bit more definition around the lip area so that I can make my lips even and whatnot. So I am going to get close to all of my edges. I gotta say, because I am in my 
lip liner with a gloss on top era I do still think that I am not going to be reaching for these on a daily basis however they do not feel like a liquid lipstick at all these feel almost like a balm at least when you first put them on maybe in a few minutes they'll dry down and they'll feel a bit more lipsticky but they feel super super weightless on the lips they don't feel like your regular traditional liquid lipstick formula right now it feels more so like a balm than a liquid lipstick if I'm going to be honest with myself however I am super into juicy glossy lips at the moment so I still don't see myself reaching for these that often but I stand corrected at least on the formula and how they feel on the lips because they feel very hydrating they feel like a creamy balmy thing on the lips even though they look like a satin finish type product to finish up my look I went ahead and put on some falsies and here is what everything is looking like I gotta say I really love the way that everything turned out. I think my complexion looks beautiful, the eyes look amazing, the brows look incredible, the lips look really good, not juicy but they look really good as well. So I honestly loved every single product I tried in today's video. These are a lot of makeup products I have been loving lately. My true first impressions were with these four products, so I'll quickly tell you how I feel about them. The blush from Charlotte Tilbury that I used today, I already knew I loved the formula and the shade I find to be fantastic. A bit more cool tone that you would expect for a pillow talk, but I think it works beautifully on my skin tone. The La Mercier Brown Eyeliner, I had also tried the formula in black, but this brown I really loved, especially if you have light eyes, I feel like you're going to absolutely love this one. If you have blue eyes, are you kidding me? Because it is going to make them pop like crazy with the warmth that it has in it. Besides that, now that I've had the liquid lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury on for around 10 minutes they didn't fully dry down they still feel very lightweight very very creamy and so formula wise I love them they feel extremely comfortable and extremely nourishing for your lips which is crazy for a liquid lipstick so I honestly highly recommend them if this is the lip look that you're going for like I said I am in my lip liner and gloss era and I can't get myself out of there and lastly the Dennis Myricks setting powder 10 out of 10 I loved the way it looked underneath my eyes. It makes everything look flawless, no creases, super finely milled, extremely finely milled. It just makes everything underneath my eyes and throughout the center of my face look incredible. One more thing, the fighter palette from Fantasy Cosmetica excellent incredible if you want it july 20th on the fantasy cosmetica website and you can use code patty 10 to get a 10 percent off so yeah that was it for this video i truly hope that you guys enjoyed it just as much as i did i'm truly amazed at how great everything looked today so give the video a thumbs up if you liked it don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already i love you all so so much thank you for watching and i hope to see you back in the next video bye